On March 6, 2025, something big happened on Capitol Hill. The U.S. Congressional Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party held a hearing titled End the Typhoons. But this wasn't about the weather. This typhoon was a code word referring to massive state-sponsored hacking operations backed by the Chinese Communist Party. Committee Chairman, Republican Congressman John Mullenar didn't hold back. He warned that cyber attacks like Seoul Typhoon in 2024 and World Typhoon before that were not just about stealing American secrets. They were part of something much bigger, a long-term infiltration strategy by the CCP. Then came a sharp warning from Democrat Raja Krishnamurthy. He introduced a powerful idea, defending forward. That means making sure every time Xi Jinping even thinks about launching an attack, he's forced to stop and ask, is this worth the price? Because the only way to stop aggression is to make the costs crystal clear before it even begins. Hi everyone, and welcome to today's show. My name is Stan. In recent years, the Chinese Communist Party's espionage operations have grown more explicit than ever. From the US-China trade war under President Trump's first term, to the global chaos of the pandemic, to the war in Ukraine, none of it has slowed Beijing down. If anything, the CCP has doubled down. Despite facing a crumbling economy at home, China is still pouring resources into military expansion and global infiltration. Chinese students have been sent abroad, not just to study, but to steal. From military attack to next-gen AI, they're gathering intelligence on behalf of the regime. And then there's the cyber side, covert hacking missions, data theft, and long-term infiltration of networks. If you've been watching this channel, you know we've exposed these tactics before, the cyber attacks, the surveillance, the stolen personal data. But what we're about to show you next takes it even further. Let's rewind to February 2021. That's when the US Department of Justice dropped a bombshell. Four members of the Chinese military, specifically the People's Liberation Army's 54th Research Institute, were formally indicted. The charges? Hacking, computer theft, economic espionage, and wire fraud, the full package. Their target? Equifax, one of America's biggest credit reporting agencies. The impact was catastrophic. In 2017, these PLA hackers breached Equifax's database and made off with the sensitive personal data of 150 million Americans. We're talking names, birth dates, home addresses, social security numbers, driver's license details, everything a hostile state needs to build psychological profiles, steal identities, or even blackmail targets. This wasn't just data theft, it was a digital weapon aimed at the American people. Fast forward to 2022, and the cyber war escalated again. A hacker group known as Sol Typhoon infiltrated some of America's most critical telecom giants, including AT&T and Verizon. What did they steal this time? Millions of call logs and text message records belonging to everyday Americans. These hackers had found backdoors, entry points left open in the US communication systems, originally built under the Patriot Act for federal surveillance and counterterrorism. And Sol Typhoon walked right in. Then came the ultimate breach. On the eve of the 2024 presidential election, phones belonging to then-candidate Donald Trump and his running mate J.D. Vance and multiple members of Congress were compromised. Sensitive information was leaked. This wasn't just cybercrime, it was election interference orchestrated through digital warfare. At the recent congressional hearing, Laura Gallant, former director of the Cyber Threat Intelligence Integration Center, confirmed what many feared. This salt typhoon operation was run by contractors working directly for China's Ministry of State Security. This was state-sponsored espionage, and it hit the highest levels of American leadership. And it wasn't just about spying on politicians. Chinese hackers have also been infiltrating the backbone of America's daily life, its critical infrastructure. We're talking about the systems that keep the lights on, the water flowing, and hospitals running. A well-timed cyber attack on these systems wouldn't just leak secrets, it would cost lives. In May 2023, Microsoft sounded the alarm. They identified another CCP-backed hacking group, Vault Typhoon and they had a terrifying strategy. Since 2021, Vault Typhoon hackers had been disguising themselves as legitimate IT software sneaking into the internal networks of vital institutions. They didn't just break in and leave, they stayed. They hid in the shadows, they waited. Using system tools, update packages, even common apps, they blended into the digital background. According to FBI and private sector investigators, some of these hackers remained dormant for years, quietly checking if their access still worked. One group hid in a regional airport system, testing access every six months. Another embedded itself in a water utility for nine months, then moved into service tracking farmland operations. 
and in Los Angeles, hackers dug through data tied to emergency response systems. They weren't just collecting data, they were mapping our vulnerabilities. Reports say these attacks linked to the Chinese military date back to at least early 2019. Their targets included Hawaii's water supply, used in sports and oil and gas facilities. And Microsoft confirmed the scope was massive, spanning communications, manufacturing, utilities, transportation, maritime, government education, and more. This wasn't just cybercrime, this was a full-scale digital warfare attack on the United States. On March 5, 2025, the U.S. Department of Justice made following information public. Twelve Chinese nationals were indicted, including two officials from China's Ministry of Public Security and eight employees of a cybersecurity company called Aisu. The company's name in Chinese is Anxuan Xinxi Ji Shu Youxian Gongsi. What was the crime they were accused of? A global hacking campaign that targeted dissidents, journalists, defense contractors, and even government agencies. This wasn't random, it was a part of a pattern, one we've seen over and over again. The Chinese Communist Party uses what they call military civil fusion. And what does it mean? It means blurring the lines between government and private industry. They've used it to justify cutting undersea cables. And now they're using it to launch cyber attacks. Or to say it more bluntly, they're outsourcing their dirty work. And why do they do that? Well, first, it's cheaper. Private hackers can be exploited for labor, paid far less than official operatives. But more importantly, plausible deniability. If things go south, if someone gets caught, if an operation is exposed, Beijing just shrugs. Well, that wasn't us, just a rogue private company. It's state-sponsored hacking hidden behind the mask of corporate independence. And it's happening on a global scale. By now it's clear, the scale of cyber threats facing the United States is staggering. And this isn't just speculation. Back in June 2024, former FBI director Chris Wray sounded the alarm. He warned that China's cyber threat is one of the most serious national security challenges the US has ever faced. And here is the number that shocked everyone. China has 50 times more hackers than FBI has cyber personnel. 50 to 1. Then, in February 2025, the US Senate held another critical hearing. This time on the malign influence of the Chinese Communist Party at home and abroad. One of the key witnesses was Dr. Jennifer Lind, associate professor of government at Dartmouth College. And her testimony was chilling. She explained how the CCP uses proxy companies to quietly acquire international media outlets, how it funds research institutions to shape global narratives, and how its cyber networks are orchestrating massive, coordinated hacking campaigns worldwide. But didn't stop there. Dr. Lind also exposed how CCP agents target the families of overseas Chinese citizens, threatening them, blackmailing them to force Chinese Americans to act in Beijing's interests. This is what influence looks like when a dictatorship blends propaganda, cyber warfare, and personal coercion. All all in one global operation. Following the inauguration of the new Trump administration, the United States began taking more decisive and direct action in response to the increasingly aggressive threat posed by the Chinese Communist Party. Among the measures being seriously considered is a ban of issuing student visas to Chinese nationals, a move aimed at curbing the persistent and well-documented problem of Chinese students, whether acting willingly or under pressure from state authorities, engaging in the theft of advanced American technologies or participating in espionage activities on American soil. A stark illustration of this concern emerged in 2023, when five Chinese students enrolled at the University of Michigan were caught trespassing into Camp Grayling, a sensitive U.S. military training facility, at a time when Taiwanese military personnel were present for joint exercises. These students attempted to illicitly record classified military operations, raising serious questions about the true intent behind many Chinese nationals' academic or professional activities in the U.S. Beyond individuals, the U.S. is also examining technological vulnerabilities at the infrastructure level. One proposal involves a nationwide ban on Chinese manufactured TP-Link routers. This comes after a 2023 warning from the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which revealed that TP-Link devices contain serious vulnerabilities that could be exploited for remote code execution, basically giving foreign actors access to a network across the country. National security voices from within the scientific and defense communities have echoed these concerns. Paul Dabber, CEO of Borg Quantum Technology and a former Undersecretary of Science at the U.S. Department of Energy, testified before the Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources. He recommended that the U.S. bar Chinese nationals from accessing national laboratories. His position was echoed and expanded upon by Senator Tom Cotton, chair of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, who voiced support for legislation that would prohibit nationals from adversarial states, including China, Cuba, Iran, North Korea and Russia, from entering U.S. national 
collapse unless a clear exemption is granted based on a compelling national interest. Meanwhile, Taiwan is facing its own version of this challenge. As Chinese influence operations intensify, so too must Taiwan's legal and institutional defenses. In November 2024, Taiwanese prosecutors indict Chang Men Chong, a Central Committee member of the China Unification Promotion Party, and his wife under the Anti-Infiltration Act. According to the indictment, the couple received 74 million NT dollars from the Chinese government over more than a decade which they allegedly used to influence referendum outcomes, promote recall campaigns, support particular candidates, and of course, amplify pro-China political parties. Recognizing the growing threat of CCP infiltration within the military itself, President Lai ching te announced on March 13, 2025, the reinstatement of Taiwan's military trial system, a move intended to re-establish deterrence and accountability within the ranks of Taiwan's armed forces. At the same time, Taiwan's National Immigration Agency has begun deporting Chinese spouses who publicly advocate or incite violent unification by force, sending a clear message that free speech cannot be used as a shield for promoting foreign subversion or threats to national sovereignty. In many ways, the actions taken by both the United States and Taiwan in recent months can be understood as part of a broader defending forward strategy, one that seeks to impose real consequences on those who would collaborate with hostile regimes before irreparable damage is done. For Taiwan, this means sending a message to would-be infiltrators, agents or sympathizers. Any attempt to undermine the country's sovereignty will come at a price. But while these legal and administrative crackdowns are important, we must be honest about one thing. They are only the beginning. Given the rapidly escalating tensions in the Taiwan Strait and Chinese Communist Party's increasingly open hostility, simply enforcing existing laws is no longer enough. Taiwan must take bold, proactive steps to harden its defenses across every domain. Encouragingly, we are seeing signs of that. Taiwan is slated to install two new international undersea cables this year. It's a vital move to ensure Taiwan remains connected to the global internet, even in the event of physical sabotage. In parallel, Taiwan is investing in low-Earth orbit satellite systems, building a resilient communication infrastructure that can withstand natural disasters, cyber attacks or military blockades. But ultimately, no amount of infrastructure will matter unless the people of Taiwan understand the basic truth. The Chinese Communist Party is not a misunderstood neighbor or a cultural cousin. It's the single most dangerous hostile force threatening Taiwan's future. Its tactics may vary, from disinformation and economic coercion to military drills and cyber warfare. But the goal is always the same – domination without consent. This is why the most powerful defense Taiwan can build isn't just military hardware or legal reform. It's a unified public awareness, a shared understanding that the sovereignty must be defended not only from outside but from within. Because when a free society knows who its enemy is and has the will to fight back, then no amount of pressure, propaganda or infiltration will ever be enough to bring it down. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please press like, subscribe and share. This is Tian. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.